morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us on the last day of our inaugural Ontario Football Mega Clinic. Uh, we uh, are super excited today to, to, to talk defense, special teams, uh, defensive skills, special team skills, and defensive systems and special team systems. Um, before I, I kind of start off, uh, you know, I want to make sure I thank uh, the OUA and Riddell for giving us the opportunity and the support to be able to, uh, you know, have this mega clinic and to, to be able to talk football and especially as, you know, hopefully there's a light at the end of the tunnel with the pandemic and, and we are getting prepped for <laughs> football in the fall. Uh, you know, it's great to be able to get the community together and, and just talk ball and to, to be able to, you know, put football in the forefront. So, um, once again, today we have a variety of coaches and, and even players prepared to share their knowledge. Um, today, I'm excited to start us off with, uh, with two unbelievable kickers to talk us, probably one of the most important pieces of the game that we probably don't talk about enough. Um, so we have uh, all-star and Grey Cup champion, uh, Liram Haralahu, and his partner at Coach Kick uh, Elite, Daryl Wheeler, joining us to discuss the fundamentals of kicking. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Just real quick bios on the two. So Daryl Wheeler has tons of experience kicking and coaching over the past 20 years. He played for the Western Mustangs from 2008 to 2011, where he was a two-time second-team All-Canadian and two-time first-team OUA All-Star as a punter. He has won Yates Cups as a player, as well as two Yates Cups as a coach, and has also won a Vanier Cup. Um, sorry, guys, just lost my screen. Just one second. Liram is a is also I, there's a lot of Western Mustangs here on this call right now. So, uh, Liram is also a former Western Mustang kicker. Must be something in the water at the kicking in London, right? Uh, who is a is, uh, U Sports career points record holder and two-time OUA All-Star. He was also recognized as a second-team All-Canadian in 2013. Liram has went on to be a successful CFL kicker, spending time with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and the Toronto Argonauts, where he became a Grey Cup champion in 2017. And I don't know if anybody saw his kick recently. Uh, you know, pretty impressive uh, distance. What was, what was the final distance on that kick, Liam? Oh, this past week? Yeah. Oh, it was from 59. Yeah. I mean, so not so bad, right? Like that's a pretty impressive kick guys. Appreciate, appreciate you guys being on. So it was funny. I watched a lot of TikTok, and this guy, you know, put a TikTok out there. Like, what would you rather have, you know, uh, if you could draft a, a first round kicker that could make a kick hundred percent of the time from anywhere in the field. And he broke down the analytics that if you knew you had a kicker that could hit hundred percent of the time, all the time, you'd have the most prolific offense in, you know, ever. So, um, I don't know if you guys do, can do that hundreds of the time, all the time, but hopefully we can give people the tools to be able to get close. So appreciate you guys being on. <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks Just... for having us. Uh, Daryl's going to share our screen. Then we have a little presentation for you guys. Uh, and just to kind of explain to you um, kind of what we do and, uh, and give you a little bit of background of some of the drills and tips that, you know, if you're starting out to be a kicker or, you know, someone, or if you're from a coach, uh, you know, some of these things you can, incorporate in their daily uh, practices or daily training. And, um, you know, we, Daryl and I have been uh, helping our, our, our coach, Coach Kick, for, for quite a bit now. And uh, we just want to give kids the opportunity to, you know, instead of flying down to the States and spending $1,000 for three-hour lessons, which I've spent, um, and to basically, you know, have the opportunity to actually do it in Ontario. Um, you know, we were also doing uh, online coaching as well. So uh, it, the whole point of this is to help kids, um, help high school kids get to what they want to be, what they want to be uh, in terms of football. As you see, Coach Kick there, he's our mentor and uh, he has uh, the most prolific uh, range of guys from from all over Canada. And he has the top five guys in every kicking category uh, for the last 30 years, um, 35 years now, I should say, um, you know, helped Daryl get to Utah state, um, has helped me get to, uh, the NFL. And, uh, you know, these guys are wh who I look, uh, to in terms of kicking, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, Daryl and I speak, uh, you know, sharing film, whether it's game film, practice film, um, and spend a lot of time with my, uh, with coach kick as well. Uh, we're, we're located in Ontario, but like I said, um, from London to all the way to Toronto, uh, we're able to help you guys out, whatever you need, if you want to see in person, but we can also do online. Um, just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of perspective of, you know, what we're doing and uh, what we're doing to help 
young uh, young athletes. Right now, we have I think uh, three guys in the CFL um, that are going this year, um, and every kicker that we have coached has a full scholarship um, in Canada, and we have a letter of intent uh, for a guy, one of our kickers that's going to go to Arkansas State. So just so you know, if you if you're willing to put the work, we're willing to help, and uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get the show going. Daryl, did I miss anything else for our introduction? No, I th I think you covered everything. Okay. It's, we got guys from you know and Division One, the Eastern Michigan, the youth sports at the high school mm -hmm. levels, and kicking wins field position in football games, like what you've done in a spring league with the Generals and with Toronto, and you know even in training camp with, with the Rams, it's it's the hidden points, but it's a hidden yards. And mm -hmm. if as you get later in the season and the games are closer teams are going to be evenly matched. So kicking's the X factor. And if you have a guy that's capable, you're going to win a lot of games. You're going to win great cups or whatever championships your league play. So, um, yeah. So as um, we digress and, you know, Liam's gone to some of the background and a lot of it is being able to put the work. Well, there needs to be a process. You can't just wish it's going to happen or just show up to the field and practice in game day and say, well, he's athletic. He's going to get it done. Um, in the OUA, there's about 133, 140 plays a game, about 33%, 33 of those on average are kicking, game, kicking plays. So whether it's punt, punt return, kick, kick off return, field goal, whatever it is. So it has a big impact. And with your roster sizes, high school and college level, there's not very many guys to go around. It's how do we incorporate special teams and how do we incorporate our kickers to be active in their preparation and drills so they can be successful on game day. So um, the punts, the number one play in the switch of field position in football, on average, 40 yards, right? Give and take high school, college, the pro level that it's a big flip in not only field position, but momentum. Um, where does a kicker, a punter, a specialist fit into this equation? Because there has to be a process. Some of you that are on here from university level, high school, or pro level, it's it's a big part of the game. And you can't just, well, you know, we're a good team. We're going to just do special teams preparation, kick on preparation pregame. You know, it's got to be a process and scripted, and you got to have some fundamentals to it. Um, and um, as a specialist and, and as a coach, we have to figure out how much time we're putting into it. Obviously, if you're a high school level, college level, pro level, the amount of time you have changes from some of you that are, you know, teachers, uh, their careers that you have this time from, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday after school, then you play Thursday or Friday. How do we incorporate a structure in the, the special teams unit, you know, working with the kicker and punter, working with the protection unit, return units, because you all have to work. Um, do we do just what's required? A lot of OUA and, and Can West coaches, AUS coaches call me. They said, well, our kicker just does what's required. Well, can we, our kicker and our specialist do more than that? Um, has to be just more than the mandatory meeting time, pre-practice, in-game practice, and Saturday, Sunday walkthrough. To be successful, we need to be doing more than that. Because football, as you all know, it's a year-round job, even though we play games a certain time of the year, football's year round. The year will test attest to that, that football's a 24 seven gig, how you eat, how you nutrition, but how you train and how you make time and practice, how we script it, how we schedule it, improve on our strength, develop our weaknesses. And Roy is a believer in don't do too much, simplify and execute. Good teams might know what you're doing, but that's okay. Can we execute and do what we need to do and have those expectations for specialists? And will we train our guys? Um, do we have structure or is it just, more kicking because more is not necessarily better. We focus on quality and have the kids try to understand and compartmentalize the why and how because you're going to have the best coaches in the world, the Belichicks, the Stevens, but the kicker's on the field doing it. The coach isn't doing it for them. They have to get in that mindset where all we ask them is to do their job. Um, are we charting performance and practice and games? Are we charting? Are we being transparent? Um, are we explicit with our goals and the how and the why? And, helping them gain confidence to establish their rhythm and make sure they understand each and every rep that they do in practice, that they do throughout the week, that they do in training, even right now. The reps and the time that they do right now is going to dictate their success when football is going to be played because football is going to be played and it's being played in the States already. So, um, and I'll hand it over to Liam here and he'll talk about some best practices. 
Yes, just some of these things like Daryl hit on. If if you're an aspiring uh, a kicker that's going to play uh, in new sports, you should be kicking a minimum one to two times a week. Uh, you should also be weight training one to two times a week, and you got to also do some speed training. So these are all mixtures of things. You can't just do I'm going to kick six or seven times uh, th this week and then weight train. You got to have a kind of a system. And uh, speaking with Coach uh, Coach Daryl and I, you know, we'll, we'll help you schedule that time. It's like okay. If, if, for me, I work out uh, my upper body Sunday. On uh, Monday, I kick. Tuesday, lower body. Wednesday, I'll have uh, more of speed, uh, agility, and also yoga. And then back to Thursday, we'll go uh, full body. Friday, we'll do kick. And then Saturday, it's either we'll do more of like recovery or we'll have the full day off. So it's more of stuff like this that you're going to do. Uh, if you're in, in new sports, some of our college kickers, we have them on a similar, but the weight training goes up a little bit. The speed and flexibility has to go up a little bit. So every level, you kind of have to do more. Uh, and if you're in CFL, you know, it's hard to get there, but it's even harder to stay there. You know, so you got to be kicking three times a week. You know, you got to be weight training three times a week. And you got to be doing the speed training and flexibility. Your life is football uh, and, and your job is football. So uh, you got to have a good um, f uh, plan that you're able to execute and get in good rhythm that even when the season starts, you know, we have a plan for that. In the off season, we have a plan for that. We know when you should be taking a time off. We know when you should be uh, kicking. You know, a lot, a lot of the um, kickers uh, that we we've spoken to, you know, are guys that you know don't kick until a month before. But those guys are lasting in the CFL, um, you know, one or two years. Uh, we we have a system that you know that really works. Uh, that's helped me succeed to get to where I am. It's helped Daryl succeed where he is. And uh, if you look at uh, Last couple of years, um, uh, we mentioned before some of the kickers from from Western, Mark Leggio. You know he broke. Uh, he's what they're a five eight. Five foot, yeah, generous five yeah. eight. I mean, generous five, five eight, <laughs> and you would think you would think how is a, a guy that's five seven five eight be able to break the uh, the punting record that has been held by a former uh, coach kick athlete uh, who was what six three. Yeah, uh, Michael uh, Bryan. Yeah, Michael Nothing Bryan. Yeah. So, plastic. so you think if you're a punter, you're going to be, uh, you know, you're going to be doing, you're, you're going to need this, uh, uh, the body type of kicking uh, big, uh, long punts. But, you know, a guy that's five eight broke the record for CIS. Uh, so it just shows to you know his hard work and dedication that you know any of these things can be done. Um, next, Daryl, if we go to slide six, please. Yeah, let me get to it. You see it? Um, yep, yeah. absolutely. So for, for kickers, we have areas of focus for training. You know, uh, stability is a big thing, and I've incorporated a lot of that this past year. Uh, you know, when we're doing, um, we're not necessarily just doing bench presses, but I'm actually doing a single-handed bench press on a BOSU ball. So I'm actually engaging my core, able to have stability, by the same time working my chest. Uh, same thing goes for other um, pulls, um, what, uh, or any other exercises, everything we're trying to do is inc uh, incorporate our core because when we're kicking, we're planting on one foot and the other one is the left foot for right foot of kicker is keeping your balance and the right foot is helping you, uh, push the ball through. So you got to have high ankles, high, uh, strong knees, strong hips. Your posterior chain is so important by posterior ch chain. I mean, everything in the back, starting from your calves, hamstrings, glutes, back, uh, those are key, key uh, components when you're working out. And we have plans for, for guys uh, that do our programs to help them for stability, help them for strength, uh, making sure their psoas is as strong, but psoas can also be one of the most weakest things that help you in terms of stress, uh, in terms of any injuries that you might have. So we understand the biomechanics of kicking and training. Uh, most importantly, like we said, when we have a plan set up for you, your flexibility is going to be just as important as your kicking and your strength training. These all work in, together in unison. I know if we have some of the high school kids that are on there right now, they can probably walk on a field and start kicking and they'll be fine because you're young. But once you get in your 20s, once you get in your 25s, you're going to start having some of these things where you, you need a warm up. Uh, you need a flexibility. You need the strength, you know, to get to it. Because if you look at all the OUA kickers uh, and punters, they're, I always say they're all within probably four or five yards. If someone's hitting a 50, someone's hitting a 45 on the other end. Do you know what I mean? So it's a matter of can you hit those kicks 
consistently. So does your 45 feel like you're hitting it from, uh, you know, 35? And, and those are, you know, every, once you get to the next level, everyone's within 1% of each other. Uh, but it comes down to, hey, are you able to make those big kicks? Are you able to make those big kicks consistently? Because everyone's going to be the same physically, uh, physically, mentally as strong as you are. And it's a matter of who is willing to do the extra work and who's willing to prepare to make those kicks when it counts. You want next slide? Yeah, yeah okay. we'll go next slide and uh, we'll we'll talk about a little bit. Daryl's gonna pull up the iPad here. Some of the kicking and punting drills. Um, we use an app called Huddle uh, Technique that uh, when we go on on the field, we're training our guys. We're able to videotape them and then send it afterwards, and we can speak to them and we can add notes to it. And from that, we can actually break down film um, and add notes and uh, draw certain things on there that we see to help you guys. And it's a great uh, feedback system, especially if you're on the field, because uh, you got our guys can see right away in uh, like one sixteenth motion of how fast, uh, like how we can uh, dictate what's going on in your kicks. Uh, these are just some simple uh, drills that we have, and uh, we have this accessible to all our guys. Um, as you can see, it was during the winter and it was minus 20 inside. Um, but uh, this is just talking about the plant foot, where we want to have the plant foot. We want the uh, we want a plant foot right beside the ball, and we want to be able to. Focus. If you see the circle here, if you uh, pretend that's a clock, we always wanted to face. If we're in the middle of the field, we kind of want to face it. We call it about 12:30, 1 o'clock. The reason for it, uh, so our ankles can actually be strong, and we're able to come off that left uh, calf, and we're able to come off that left side of our body. Uh, you see uh, some guys doing, you see on YouTube. And the reason I speak about some guys is because I've gone to these camps and I've seen some of the, uh, some of the other kickers and they'll actually plant where the, uh, the ball, uh, their plant foot is at like 11 o'clock, meaning your ankle is really crooked on the side and you are not able to come off the left side of your foot. So that's why we have our, uh, our kickers plant more 12 o'clock, one o'clock so that we can actually come through the ball and have our hips clear so we can have it. Go ahead, Daryl. This is just a simple uh, drill that we use. It's called no step. And this is what we do just to start out. We wanna know how the ball feels off the foot. So we're just planting, putting our weight on our front foot and we're bringing that leg back a little bit and just nice, good contact and follow through. See how my body's moving forward and I'm bringing in all the way at the end, okay? And all I'm trying to feel is how the ball feels, how my body feels that day. It's, it's a warm-up drill that we can use. Most times we have guys go right on the hash so you can actually see it where, uh, where the ball is going. It's going straight down the hash. You don't have to use uprights. I don't, the whole point of the drill is the ball is gonna go about five to 10 yards ahead of you. It's not trying to go, uh, you know, 60 yards with a no step kick. So see it from the side angle where my foot is planted and a follow through, put my weight on my left side and a little bend, boom, come through and fall through. Okay. This is the one step. So this is the progression. So we're gonna go one step back, one step over. We're gonna put our right foot forward because we wanna plant with our left, this one step. And the same idea, this is the next progression step. Go ahead, Daryl. And plant, plant's good, and a little skip. And this is only about to go 15, 20 yards. It doesn't have to be any further. You can have, if you go down the hash, you can figure out how you're hitting the ball. And this is just another progression. If you have a coach that can catch the ball, I'm not, the whole point of this is I want to know how my foot's feeling. I want to know how the ball's feeling. And I want to just be able to work on my accuracy hitting down the line. I don't need uprights. You can hit it down the sideline. You can hit it in the end zone. You just need a line. Okay. There's a side view. Yep. Same thing. See how my body's leaning over top of the ball, a nice little skip. See plant and skip. We're skipping that as if we're just jumping over the line a little bit, having our momentum carry through the ball so we can actually use our power to win. We'll admit Jeff. <laughs> All right. 
Let me just keep working through that here. So yeah, I... yeah, no problem. Good. And this is the app that we use, and we can actually tag, as you see, we uh, tag one of our athletes who uh, is out in Winnipeg, and I'm, I actually uh, sent these drills to him, and we're able to talk about these. Um, I know Daryl, I'll send him film, and we'll speak on it just on this app, and we, it's almost like Instagram, but you can actually slow it down, slow motion to 1 16th uh, of the actual time. Um, so you can break down film and it's actually really clear, uh, film. Um, and it just gives us another tool that we can use, um, just like golfers. Uh, this is uh, one of the drills called down the line. If, if you, you know, a lot of times kickers have free time during, uh, practice. So you can use this, uh, you know, at the back of the end zone, if you have a white line, um, I just use the center line. Sometimes the offense and defense are split and same thing. I'm just trying to hit you know, do my normal steps and hit our cross and just to work on accuracy. Not always, we don't always have the uprights. So we have to be creative in what we can do. And the whole, and you see some of these drills, I'm not trying to kick a thousand balls at full strength. I'm just trying to work on my technique, make sure the ball's feeling good, make sure my body's feeling good, that when I'm ready to uh, do field goal, uh, um, field goal block, I can go full tilt and I can actually focus on what I'm doing because I'm already prepared. This is one of my favorite drills. Um, so what, the whole po uh, purpose of this is to work on your angle. Sometimes we see the angles as being too wide. So we try to exaggerate it even more so that when you actually go back to kick a regular field goal and you're on the hash, it feels like you're down the center. Um, so what we do, and we actually used to do with Daryl a lot uh, during our practices. Uh, and the whole point of this is you can even have a competition. You got to get the ball through the uprights, from we usually go just uh, between the numbers and the sideline and then you just go down from say from 45 yards and you're just trying to hit an angle if you make it you go down uh, to 40 if you make that you go down to 35 and you're just trying to work those angles through the upright all the way down to the five yard line where the angle gets really tough and uh it can be a great um skill to to get some if you have more than one kicker to have a little competition uh, but also is just to you know other things that we can do um, this is also called the similar to the down the line if you're on the goal post you're trying to hit the goal post and you're just trying to hit it straight on um, so if you have uh, some free space you can work on it and you're just trying to hit straight onto the goal post um, if the goalposts are smaller, if you're trying to work on height, you can get even higher from the sideline. Our next one is going to be uh, working on height. And this is something I incorporated with Daryl when I first came to Western. And I said five yards back. So I, I from the field, I'll go in the back of the end zone um, where the field goal post is anchored. And I'll count five yards back that way. So therefore, um, I'm trying to get it above the uh, upright. Uh, so this kind of helps with my height to make sure that, you know, my, it's not going to be blocked. If I'm five yards away and I can kick it uh, 10 feet high, uh, no one should be able to, uh, in 1.3 seconds, run three yards and jump the size of a um, basketball net to block it. So uh, that's a really good drill that you can incorporate in your uh, warm-up routine. I'll get to some of your pointers and we can get to the punting. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, that's the wrong one. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. There we go. So, um, oh, this me there. Okay. Um, for for pun, I'll talk to kicking, and you can talk to punting because Daryl, there okay. is Daryl was one of the best punters ever in uh, CIS, especially into the elements. Um, so when we're doing some of these kicking drills, is, are we same focus on, on the process, not just the end result? We understand the whole purpose of the kick is to get it through. But if we're just focused on getting it through, we're forgetting, hey, is my process of setting up properly, my mind is clear, I'm focused on my one thought, and are we able to come through that ball? Are we building rhythm? Are we building timing with our uh, snapper and holder? You know, Are we being consistent with all these things? Uh, is my ball going one left, one right, one down the middle? If that's the case, then you kind of have to incorporate some of these drills so that you know the ball is staying consistent down the line. How's the rotation of the ball? We call the X ball when the ball is just moving in, in different direction. You see uh, a lot of times on NFL Sunday when the ball is uh, slowed down 
is just end over end. And that's a perfect rotation on the ball. Um, and you'll see the line. I know the NFLs, the hashes are just right down the uprights, but you know, how, how's that ball moving uh, when you see it? Uh, how's the velocity? You get enough height, enough distance. Um, and are you able to, you know, next day, take it back and watch the film? I had a game last night in Houston. The film was up 30 minutes after the game. What first thing I, I came home, watched the film. What did I do right? What did I do wrong? Um, you know, you want to build that kind of um, that kind of a plan for yourself that if I'm going to practice and I have a coach with me and they're videotaping me, I can look at that and I can write down what am I doing? What am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? What can I do for next time? You know, and having these things. It's very simple little things you can do to make yourself more successful. Next, Daryl. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get to it. So. Um, and punting. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, go ahead. So um, obviously, right? Everybody sees, you know, the success of the field goal kickers because it's cut and dry, make or miss or distance is punting's kind of more that hidden position where, you know, it, it's kind of like that good referee or that, you know, nobody notices because he's doing his job. A lot of good punters, nobody notices because they're just doing their job, right? They're just taking control of the hidden yards. And you look at some of the stats in some games at OUA, the top guys are 47, the bottom guys are 30. So you're flipping 17 yards, almost two first downs every possession. Five possessions, it's a touchdown, right? So we talk about punting, being able to finish drives. Jimbo Fisher, Texas A&M, talks about finishing every drive with a, kick, a, kick, a PAT, a field goal, or a punt, minimizing turnover. So when we talk about punting drills, it's not just going there, getting a big, huge guy to smash the ball. We'll talk about some holding, but the ball fundamentals, um, things about step, step, drop, um, what we go through with those guys, step, step in a swing, no step to one step and punt pass, which I will bring up on um, huddle right here. And the big thing yeah. is having some structure, making sure, especially as the season goes on, guys just want to get into kicking. They have to be able to do the drill. So if you have a punt focused day, they better be starting out pre-practice after a warm up, doing their punting fundamentals, not just going on punting so they can pay attention to their footwork, pay attention to their swing as their hand-eye coordination. Are they seeing contact? Are they following through? Um, the elements, like Liam said, there's a lot of guys that are kickers that try to punt. A punter who can kick is way more valuable, especially in a Canadian game because of roster sizes. Most of the programs in youth sport, high school, even the CFL, like Liam, he had to do both, has so much more value because you can use that roster spot somewhere else. So I'll get into the film. I'm just going to share right here. Just bear with me a second. Okay, it's loading up now. Okay, perfect. So um, punting fundamentals, this is Liam going through the drop here. Talk about placement. His drop is not at his chest, hip pocket. Okay, his eyes are down. His hands, the finger, the fingertips are almost together like a big baseball glove. His thumb is on the seam, right? Where the laces are. His guide hand is just as important as a drop hand. It's craignable. Lots of guys make a mistake letting go of their left hand, or if you're a left footed kicker, the right hand early, they twist and turn and their drop turns like a tennis racket and they're volleying the ball. You look at his feet. He's got a good shoulder width relationship. A lot of guys, they step like they have penguin feet or duck feet. We want to be able to simulate like we're on skis. As we drop it, he keeps the hip height. His eyes stay on the ball. And he goes through it. His eyes don't pop up. His shoulders don't pop up. Making sure when he drops it, it drops on the fat part of the ball and comes up. Lots of guys around the league, they struggle because they're dropping their timing. Right. So even if guys think, well, it's tedious, it's menial, it's very important because if we don't have a controlled working drop, our punts is not going to work at all. And the idea is, you know, even good punters, um, the best team in 2019, they punted 45 times, one team punted 84. Most, you know, you're, you are punting more times than anything else. So let's make sure we start from the ground up, the base up. We get here and we talk about our steps incorporating with the drop. You look at Leon's feet and eyes. He, we call it stacking feet when guys struggle. They step right over left and they have to turn. Their eyes pop up, their chest pops up, so they get a quarter of a swing. Your swing is your back swing to your follow through. You want to be able to maximize it. And having this drill, they're paying attention to their steps, working with their drops, rising their hands. It helps it a lot. You see his eyes. He catches a drop, sets it at his hip. 
doesn't waste time bringing it back to his hip. He sets it where he catches it. He uses his two hands. As he sets, he starts just moving his feet. You see his right foot staying on the hash and his left foot keeping his width. Because you're not kicking with your legs. You're kicking with your posterior chain, your upper body, your hips. It's almost doing like a hang clean or a deadlift. Or your, it's that pelvic tilt that's creating the torque in your punt. And you see his eyes following the drop. And you see he doesn't let go of the guide hand until he plants. His swing comes through. When he swings, his eyes are still seeing the ball through contact. His eyes are seeing, is looking at the ball hitting the ground. You see the width in his steps. He has a heel to toe relationship with his steps. He's a shoulder width relationship. That's consistent. Whether it's kicking boundary field, width to an inner and kicking out of his own end or into the opponent's end, this doesn't change. Okay. And, and this is stuff that will wrap. Right, we'll rep with the pro guys, we'll rep with the college guys, making sure it's hitting. He's hitting on a bony part of his foot, and his eyes followed the drop. And one thing about Liam, he came in as a natural field goal kicker, but the one thing that's probably improved the most, and he'll tell you, is his punting. Right, he started his college career 29 30, he finished in his 40s, mid 40s, punter now. Right, he's really become a balanced kicker, but it's took it took a lot of work, it took a lot of time. Right, and he's improved his field goal kicking. But it's the details on his field of kicking that he's improved the most, right? Where you may not see it, but guys at high levels see it, right? Where, um, and again, this is another drill that we'll talk about. It's the next progression, okay? Where he's incorporating more steps in that swing, okay? You see him go. He's not looking up and trying to swing so hard. He's trying to establish his rhythm. We talk about rhythm, timing, speed. Your rhythm is your speed. Your speed is your timing. And the timing's everything, right? There's lots of big body punters in the NFL. They last two, three years to try to hammer the ball. Guys like a Thomas Moore said and other guys, they have a good rhythm. It's consistent. Justin Tucker talked about one of the best kickers. He's not a big guy. He doesn't smash the ball. Talks about rhythm. This drill with the step, step, drop, swing focuses on rhythm, follow through. He's getting a lift off his plant foot, as you'll see. See, he catches it. Look at his eyes follow the ball. Look at his hands follow the ball. Lots of guys one-handed or cheat, or they pop their chest up, look up like bad golfers or bad baseball hitters, right? They won't see the ball. He's focusing hand-eye coordination, sets to drop. Look at his feet. They don't deviate from the line. Look at his timing. He doesn't let go of the guy until he drops it. And as he drops it, just over his hip height. And as he comes through, look at his swing. We talked about a pendulum. A lot of guys, their swing gets stuck behind their left glute, so they roundhouse. His swing is a pendulum where it's behind the right glute. It comes forward through the hip, up through the sternum. And you look at his swing. Look at his eyes. Look at his arms, right? Look at that lift. His eyes are the last thing to pop up. His arm and right side of his body rips through his shoulders, his core. He's kicking just as much as his upper body as is his lower body right he's efficient he's not trying to smash his groin he's not trying to smash his quad like lots of lots of guys do it's effortless he's gliding he's floating look at him pushing off the balls of his feet look at the explosion off the plant okay lots of guys waste time with their feet on the ground sinking in their heels he's bouncing off the balls of his feet it's like you've seen bolt running he's minimizing time on the ground he's transferring so he can put his momentum his posterior chain into the kick He's kicking with hamstrings, getting that lift off the ground. His eyes and his arms are following the ball, okay? If punting is kicking with your body, that's field goal kicking. And this is stuff that will replicate. Again, same idea. Effortless, okay? His plant foot, his swing foot, his hips are all going in the direction where he wants to hit the football, okay? And again, as we get into making contact, this is like a goalie getting hit, pucks hit on pregame. We'll do no step, one step, uh, and punt pass, or he's here. He's just at a stacked position, working on the finish, working on transferring and pushing off his plant foot, creating an explosion. His drop here is around his hip. He's working that full swing. His eyes are seeing contact as we go through. Look at his back swing. Lots of guys, you'll see their backswing starts here and their finish starts here. They're missing over half their swing. Make sure your guys are pants, your backswing should be at their glute or lower back. They should be finishing the swing. Look where he finishes contact. 
right? He finishes up here. Lots of guys are kicking in this league, even a pro league. He's getting quarter of a swing, a third of a swing, an eighth of a swing. Your guy doesn't, your guy could be like Mark, who's like a five foot four or five foot six guy. Maximize what they have and make sure they're paying attention to these details. Leonard Mason isn't the tallest guy in the world, but he's more than tall enough, but he maximizes his lever. He doesn't have half a lever. His lever doesn't go from here to here. His lever starts from here, ends here. So he's increasing his leg like he's kicking like he's six foot six or six foot seven. Okay. Now, the last drill we have on here is a one step, much like the field goal. We're really incorporating and focusing on the follow through. Lots of guys stop at contact, right? As they stop at contact, their swing slows down. Velocity should be the fastest as you hit the ball. And you look at his stance. He's relaxed upper body. He's not stiff. The chin is tucked. It's imagining like a sinker's on the chin or on a helmet, keeping it down. Shoulders are rolled over so you can use your posterior chain. See him pushing off his feet. You see his drop patient. His drop doesn't leave his hand until he's ready to plant. As he plants, his back swing is ready to strike. He comes through, finishes, his arm ripped. The same idea. And it's very relaxed. So one common thread, he's not trying to hit the ball hard. Lots of guys, they think, well, if I hit the ball hard, I'm being successful. Well, it, it's not about how hard you kick it. There's no ribbons given out on who's the hardest kicker or who can bench press the most or jump the highest. Functional strength, functional flexibility, being efficient. It's not the game day reps that tire guys out. It's the practice reps the, and the training reps because they're just kicking the kick instead of kicking with a purpose. So we'll get back to the presentation here. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the punch out pointers. It's making sure our guys don't get lazy. And Liam will tell you there's lots of guys that have strong legs at the high levels that don't make it because they're lazy. They don't work on the fundamentals. They don't work on the drop, the swing. They don't watch film and break it down. Probably a lot of Liam's teammates after the game didn't break down the film. They may look at it when the coach tells them to look at it. Are our guys being proactive? Or as coaches, are we making sure they're putting in the work, being consistent with their preparation? Footwork. Can we film the footwork? Even if it's once a week or they're under training to see where they're actually going. Do they have that hand-eye coordination? Um, do they have the end zone? Do they have the feel? Um, can they gauge the how? Not worry about the how far. Worry about the how, rhythm. Even if they're timing, focus on when they start to when they swing. Is that timing fairly the same? And feel. Can they make sure the ball, it's that subtle pop, not a heavy slap. Can they feel that subtle pop and be more and more comfortable with that? And um, as a coach, um, before I hand it off to Lear, it's are you supporting your specialist and being transparent, um, especially at the higher levels if you have an opportunity for strength and condition coach? Are they involved with the programs? Liam develops lots of programs for kickers and punters across North America, and they're not the same position as linemen or receivers or quarterbacks. There's different demands. Are we tailoring workouts towards the kicker's needs? If they lift heavy and slow, how are they going to kick heavy and slow, right? If they're trying to do everything hard, that's how they're going to kick. So can we ask and get the information so they can develop and strength train, flexibility train year-round for something that's specific to their needs. Um, as a coach, supporting your specialist, being transparent, building short-term goals, but finding ways to track and measure progress, knowing, hey, what are our goals? Are we getting there? How can we get there? And um, understanding when to utilize the drills and how to incorporate them, right? Depending on who your opponent is, depending on what they struggled in the day before, making sure that they, you have guys that are kickers like Liam that are self-leaders, that they get it, they understand how important it is, especially some of you that have, you're coaching every position to high school level or some of you that at the college level coaches, recruiters, everything else at the pro level. You don't really have time to help develop them, right? They have to take that leadership role to, to be accountable, to do these things themselves, to, the pocket time and maybe you're scripting you know time every day during training camp or practice where they have to do this and and once a week you get to film that to see how are they putting in a time and does that correlate to success come the game and um from a parent's perspective i get all the time where and liam does too where they see it with rose colored glasses um as a parent, you're making sure that your, your kicker, son and daughter, you know, are, are accountable, right? Are they putting in the work? Are they just, you know, parents are telling them they're better than they really are. Are they putting in the time and the commitment? Because Liam said, if you want to be the best, it's hard. You got to put in that sweat equity. And are they willing to take feedback? Are they consistency, consistent in the frequency how they train? Can the kid give themselves an honest evaluation what they're doing good, but what they need to do better? Um, 
What is their mindset? And, you know, we have access to sports psychologists, um, Dr. Friesen out West, and talks about the mindset. It's not just a switch. Can they have a positive mindset when they're training and put themselves in a game-like scenario, even today when they go out and train? Because they can't just turn it on because it's a Super Bowl. Um, do they take feedback? Um, do they understand or do you notice a point of frustration? They need to step back and take a deep breath. And are they willing to communicate? And how can you break that communication barrier if not? And are they all in, right? We want guys to be all in, not halfway in and halfway up. Are they taking care of their bodies? Are they studying film like we are, eating properly? Are they, are they a kicker who plays football? Or are they a football player who kicks? And there's a difference, right? We want our guys to work hard and gain respect to their coaches and teammates and making sure that, hey, football's hard. It's not for everybody. Are they, are they willing to be all in so they can reach their potential? And that's the goal. So, um, and again, we talked about the process. It's the process starts every year, January 1, and go forward, right? The process of game week starts the following day, break down the film, break down what we have to do. And whether it's Tuesday, punt day, Wednesday, kick up day, Thursday, field goal day, break up the different elements because they're all different ways to kick. Kicking, punting, and kick, field goals, punts, and kickoffs are all different. So they should be emphasized one at a time. So again, how much time do you have? scripted right have specific drills right you can't do everything at once make sure they're focusing on the details reinforcing the how and set your expectations <clears throat> whether high school yeah. coach college coach pro coach if you have no expectations or you tell them to do what they want lots of times they'll do nothing so and there's um, just one thing to add before yeah. you go to value film uh yeah. one thing um i'm sure you've heard this oh i never have enough time on the field i never have not enough time uh with my snapper and holder you know, these are some of the things, whether you're a parent or you're a, a coach, the problem, uh, not the problem, the, the, the way the culture of the football is once the whole team comes, it's about, you know, offense, defense, special teams, you'll have those uh, time uh, within the practice, but how long is your uh, field goal and punt? They're most likely uh, 15, 20 minutes of your whole practice. Yes, it's one third of the game, especially in the Canadian football game. It's crucially important and you need to spend more time on it. But that time is usually used for the guys to make sure that you're protected properly, like for punt, making sure those guys are doing the drop steps properly, making sure that everything is done uh, uh, to make sure that you succeed. So what do you have to do in as a, as a kicker or as a, a parent or as a coach to kind of get them to uh, figure out a plan? Daryl and I, when we're at Western, we the practice would start what around 4 35 o'clock we'd be there at 3 45 and we'd be warm at 3 45 and we'd get in all our kicking before practice that when the practice began we had a set up we were, we had a really good coach uh that understood our process of hey we're gonna do all our our kicking at the very beginning of practice because our kickers just spent an hour kicking beforehand and warming up working uh with their holders working with their snapper working on drills that when we begin um practice coach marcus would always have us do our special teams at the very beginning so we'd have our 15 20 or 30 minutes at the very beginning of the practice that we're able to uh stay warm and complete everything that we needed to complete and then the rest of the practice we were lucky enough that our workout uh gym was uh, you know, five, uh, five, five seconds away that we would actually go in and work out and then come back out. And for the last part of the practice where we'd have situational football, whether it's two minute drills, we need a field goal to win it, or if we're running Tuesday gasters, whatever it was, we were coming back out to join the rest of the team. There's days where we stayed out with the rest of the team because the practice was different, but you have to put the initiative of being there early. Right now, yesterday we had a game uh, for the TSL uh, down here in Houston. I, our bus was, was our game was at eight o'clock here. Our bus was leaving 530. So I know I need to be at the stadium three hours before because I need to make sure I have all my visualization done, do my own kicking, and then my snap hole kick with my uh, uh, holder and snapper. So I actually came earlier to make sure I can get done what I need to get done while I have full accessibility to the field because the other team, if they're, if I'm late, and the other team starting to do their offensive and defensive work, they're not going to let you on, on, in their own half. They'll be like, beat it. So same thing, get there early, make sure you set up your stuff. And if you can't get there early, have the availability afterwards and do it afterwards. But you got to take the initiative of doing these things uh, on your own because no one is there to uh, during take uh, practice time to make sure that, hey, let me. I'm working on my plan step. I'm working on my follow through. That's not a time for follow through. That's time for execution. 
and putting all those things that you did beforehand. So I just wanted to mention that Daryl, um, yeah. before, you know, yeah. And that's, and that's awesome. And that's something that if you don't have a guy like that, find a guy like that, because there's many hours and I understand kids have class, kids are busy, but they want to be the best or, you know, you set up those expectations and make them accountable for it and make sure that they know you're watching. Cause if it's important to you, It'll be important to them. And if kicking matters, you, Urban Meyer, John Harbaugh started out as special teams co coaches and look at them now. Special teams matters. You're going to win a lot of games in the college level, two to three games a year, one because of the kicking game, even people that win championships because it, it's that close as you get to the elite levels. And I know we don't have a super amount of time left, so we'll get, we'll make sure to get through everything, have some time for questions. Um, Again, evaluating film. There's so many guys that put on YouTube out there or Instagram, oh, I kicked a 70 yard field goal or the old cent central Florida guy wasn't very good with the Argos at Donald Dele putting an 80 yard kick. It's, I want consistency when I'm looking at film. Is it a one-off or can I go out there and hit 10 field goals in a row or 10 punts in a row? So you know, it's a pattern that can be repeated. It's not just a one-off. Um, is it consistent? Does it stand out? Or is it a bunch of converts or 20 yard punts? Be like, I can get anybody to do that. If you have thousands of film to watch, is does the film pop out at you that you watch more? Um, do they have game film? If they don't have game film, obviously because of the pandemic, do you have practice film? Is it snap hole kick? Is it situational? Is, is it charted? Is, do they have field lines? Can you see the hang time? Or is it from two miles away that you can't see every anything, right? It needs to stand out. Um, is it indoors or outdoors? Are they do they have the ability to kick boundary or kick field or angle or, or kick fuels from hashes? Because so I get film from American guys every day that want to go to schools, Western, whatever it may be. If it doesn't stand out, I don't waste my time. If Liram gets hundreds of films a day too. Does it stand out? It doesn't waste his time. It's can they be consistent? Do they have the explosion? They have the tools where you can see that potential and they have a high ceiling, but also a high floor. Um, practice film, like Liram said, what we do is so important because are they training with the coach? Um, do they know, do they understand what to do? Or are they just a natural just kicks to kick and they can't figure it out because at one point or another the lack of coaching will fall apart. Um, is there improvement in their film? Do you see a progression that they're getting better? You can see the strength development, the flexibility development, but the consistency um, during practice, like Liam said, we have a structure where we're at an hour early, we practice, we go lift. Are they staying busy? Are they getting better? Are they just, you know, hanging out, being a spectator, choking around, chatting around, being a kicker who plays football instead of a football player who kicks? And game situational. A game film is a situation. There's so many guys that are the best up by 30 players in the world. But can we look at game changing kicks, possession changing kicks, down by two kicks, or your pin and you need to get a guy out of trouble and give your defense some field position? I want to be able to have guys that have that metal and have the intestinal fortitude that they get it done. And it's not about stats or numbers, it's about context. Because if you're good, they'll find you. So many guys are worried about numbers and stats. And it's like, oh, look at my sheet. I want to see the film. Can they do it when games are close, when the opponents are great and when your team needs it? And, and is it super long or is it concise? I don't need a two hour game film. Can it be two, two and a half minutes, right? The best kicks first. Can they see anything, everything that I want to see? And for a coach, me wanting more. Um, and expectations like Liam talked about, um, first of all, have a game plan. Do we understand the abilities of our specialist? The thing, we don't understand what they can do or how they can kick. If we have unrealistic expectations, we set ourselves up for failure. And we have our game expectations. Is it a freshman that's in? Is it a senior? Is it a pro guy? Is it a two-time all Kenny? Is it, right? Is it somebody that's music program? Um, what can, but what can't they do? Because I'd rather have a guy that I know what I have and what I don't have instead of a guy that can hit a 70 but miss a convert, right? Um, can our guys be consistent, whether it's location, distance, height? Because we can plan around that with specials. We can be aggressive and dictate to the other team instead of the other team dictating to us. Same with a long snapper. What can our snapper can again do? What can our protection units, what can our skill position guys do covering and breaking the game open? So let's set our expectations at the all facets of the kicking game. Understand what our players can and can't do and making sure that, hey, we're all here to do our jobs and emphasizing the importance of special teams. I'm going to tell you, most of the Canadians that play in the CFL, unless they're an offensive lineman, they're covering kicks. Can we make sure high school kids, college kids understand the importance of playing in special teams and where that can get them, right? Because if they don't, they're not going to have that opportunity most likely to play where they want to go to. The NFL, most of your 
most of your roster is filled with special teamers. So can we set the expectations, set the importance, and make sure that our best players are playing on special teams as well, even at the high school level? And um, after if you guys have any more questions, we want to leave some time or for a Q&A. I know we covered a lot. We do that at this presentation if anybody's interested in it. Um, again, we're, we're available, whether it's Liam's in Houston right now, so he's obviously available online. We do stuff virtually. Um, I do stuff, obviously, adhering to the COVID rules, one-on-one, -on -one, small group stuff. But our goal is it doesn't matter what sweater you wear. Liam and I train lots of guys at Dinkle or Alma Mater. We want the kicking game to grow, but we want to – the kicking game and special teams to be a plus aspect to your football team because so many teams it hinders their abilities to win we want your kicking game to be able to enhance your ability to win games to be comfortable in tight situations and to use a third down and fourth down game to your advantage guys this is awesome we so we do have questions so uh first question that uh we have is you know the relationship between you know specifically uh the kicker and the and the holder and, mm -hmm. and and how do you cultivate uh, one, the trust in the holder and the skill of the holder? And then similarly, when, uh, you know, the kicker's doing everything right, but for whatever reason, the holder maybe isn't doing exactly what you want during the game. How, how do you, I guess, just cultivate that relationship and yeah. that trust between the two? I can take that there. Um, I'll, I'll explain just because for, for me right now, uh, we're at the spring league and we only have 38 guys on the roster. So meaning, and I kick and punt. So if I kick and punt, I'm most likely not going to have a punter that holds because I'm punting and I can't hold for myself. <laughs> All right. So uh, I have to, I have Ryan Mallett as my holder and uh, if some of you guys might know him, but he also played for three years with Tom Brady and he's holding footballs because of the type of guy he is. You want to find a guy that wants to do it, that wants to learn, understand how important it is to the actual game. He understands that, hey, if I can't score a touchdown, we need these three points because these are going to help us win. You know, having a guy on, uh, having a guy that wants to do it is will make your day uh, or your season make or miss, right? So it, you got to have one, you got to find a guy that really wants to do it. And two, if you have to bribe him with some Subway or some Quiznos or something, do it. Uh, whatever it is, because this is going to make you successful, especially if you're in college, um, you know, you have to carry his paths, you have to do whatever you want to do, like help him out, make his life easy, just so you can have five, 10 minutes. And the biggest thing for, uh, for holders is actually understanding, start off slow. A lot of these guys haven't held. So have them, like when I first got to Toronto, I didn't have a, a holder. So I, t I would prefer to have a guy that's never held before. And I had Logan Kilgore, who you know, never held, but every day after practice, we get a hundred snaps in and we all started to have it, you know, go slow, catch the ball, understand where, uh, how you're catching the ball, understand how you're putting it down and just have your uh, kind of wire your brain of how the ball should look. And you're standing over top of him, understand, okay, this is how I want it. This is how I want it. This is how I want it. I want it more lean. And you just have to explain to them, bear with me just the first five days and you'll catch this. And then afterwards, we can pick up, you know, go to the second speed, go to third speed, go to fourth speed, and then fifth speed is game film, uh, right, or game speed. So that's the whole point. It's like you want to go slow, understand, so they're because you'll, on, like, a lot of competitive athletes want to go straight right away. No, let's go full. No. This is a specific skill. You want to be able to break it down, understand if I'm getting the laces in the back, what is my left hand doing and what is my right hand doing? What are my fingers on top doing? These are all some of the things um, that, you know, that we teach too, because Daryl was my holder in university because I, I got lucky. But as soon as he left, I had to, we had to teach another guy is find a guy that really wants to do it. If you have to bribe him with some food or carry his uh, stuff to the car, whatever you have to do, do it. And, and third, just we used to do 100 snaps each day for uh, for three weeks straight. It's the whole thing of 10,000 uh, 10, reps or 10,000 hours until you uh, get a, becomes a professional. Um, Daryl, help me out. Uh, what's yeah, the... to become an expert at it, right? Expert so at it. Yeah. Especially like you look at the hold, it's is the front knee down the back knee uh, up. Mm -hmm. um, we'll put the elbow inside the knee to have, track that placement, we'll use the middle or the index of ring finger. We'll talk about using the thumbs like a receiver catching, bring it down the yeah. eyes, following and making sure the holder, you know, talks to the kicker. The kicker is, is a quarterback of the field goal unit. Make sure the fine details are taken care of and they communicate because 
the holder has to be all in. And we talk about operation. You can have a great kicker, but you don't have to snap or hold. It doesn't matter how great the guy is. So it's making sure and have them understand how that versatility, even if it's a high school level or college level, how, you know, how do you catch the coach's eye? The ability to hold for lots of guys may be their opportunity to get on a roster because they can hold on top of playing their position. So yeah. Liam says it's yeah. getting those reps and making sure that guy's all in because you can't worry about the snap or the hold. You, you yeah. just have to focus on your job and you have to trust those guys. And lastly, to add for that, sorry, Aaron, uh, you have to understand once you get older a little bit, game management. I know when I was with Hamilton, I had Luke Tasker. He'd run 80 yards down the field, catch a touchdown. He's super hyped and excited that everyone's excited. But you have to understand, hey, I'm a kicker. You'd love to go celebrate with your teammates, but what's the next uh, play that comes up? field goal point after whatever it may be you have to be able to get back to your field uh, and dial in and then understand if it, my holder is a quarterback my holder is a receiver or running back they probably just got hit they probably just uh their adrenaline is going through the roof calm down take your time and that is on the kicker slow down your process of getting to the uh, spot wait like the refs are going to wait until they put the ball down take your time getting there because you want their heart rate to come down a little bit so they can actually focus so a lot of times, you know, you're, you got to be able to, once you get to the next level, understand these processes so that, hey, he's locked in. He does, he's not worried that he uh, he just uh, hit an ADR bomb down the field and now he, he's, you know, going uh, heads over tails and uh, not focused on the hold. So that's another thing to control your, what you can control. So that's a great transition to my next question because, you know, okay. we talked, you know, extend, I love how, how detailed you guys got into the technique. But, you know, being a kicker so much, like you said, Liam, is the mental aspect of the game. And how, you know, when you're asked to make kicks, whether it's, you know, a punt in inclement weather or whether it's a kick of the final, you know, final second of the game, how do you train your young kickers to be able to be prepared throughout the game for these big moments, both physically, you know, you might not have been on the field for the past, you know, 10 minutes and all of a sudden you got to kick a 49 yard field goal to win the game. Or similarly, you got to punt into the wind. You know, how, how do you train them mentally and physically to be ready for those types of moments? Well, physically, when we, you know, a lot of guys that I see down here in the States is they'll come. I remember going a couple of years ago to uh, one of the camps. He literally came out, kicked five field goals. Okay, I'm good for the day. Next day was the competition or two days later, the competition happened. He missed three out of his five kicks inside the 50. He didn't even make it past the next round. So I understand, especially if you're younger, you got to be able to be out there for not just an hour. It's not, you know, you don't have to kick 50-yard field goals um, for three hours straight. But you, if you uh, if you ever came to one of our, our sessions, you'll see me. I'll I'll work on my warm up. I'll go through my kicks, and eventually I'll be able to get out to 50 and 60. But I'll come back to my 40s and work on technique. So it's a matter of building that technique, that uh, uh, longevity of your practice so that, you, you know, the, uh, a football game is three, three and a half, hour, half an hour long. So making sure that you're able to do that for a full game. So physically, is you got to be able to put that sweat equity in practice. And mentally is, you know, setting as a coach, uh, you know, we're setting up guys to be like, hey, game winning kick. Uh, loser has to do 10 push-ups. It's just adding that little extra something, uh, you know, for uh, as a special teams coach, hey, coach, uh, we're doing two-minute drills today. Okay, let's, uh, is it possible to, if we're down by two, to hit a field goal? And if we're down by touchdown, let's do the extra point because you still need the extra point to be able to uh, win or tie the game. So incorporating that into a practice. So they get more and more practice. It's, it's all about that. And like Daryl said, we have a doctor out, uh, out West that we a sports psychologist helps about, you know, talking about the process, you know, worried about the, I'm, am I going to make this uh, 49 yard field goal to win the game? If you do the process, right, that field goal will go in. You're kicking into the wind and you need to uh, get your team out of trouble. I remember Mark, uh, Mark Leggio, uh, 2019, where they're playing the Yates Cup and he crushes into the wind like a 50-yard bomb that made him get out of the, uh, their own uh, red zone and change the whole game. And it's what they focus on, on the process. He can't control the wind. You know what I mean? You can't control whether it's a uh, 49-yard field goal or a 12-yard field goal. Focus on your process have practice with your coaches, have practice with yourselves, putting yourself in situations and understand and writing things down. Okay. Why did I miss that one? If I was in practice, Oh, I got distracted. Why did you get distracted? Where'd your mind go? It's about getting back to your target and what your process is just a short. 
because yeah. you can talk, talk about that a whole uh, hour long. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, you know, I love it. I, I like, you know, it, it comes down to the process. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, I think we've heard that a lot this weekend from, from a variety of coaches, just, you know, understanding the process, being consistent. And guys, I appreciate you guys so much talking, kicking Absolutely. a lot of times. Thank you. You know, it's the last thing that we think about until it's the first thing that we have to think about, right? <laughs> exactly. So uh, yeah. I appreciate you guys being here and make sure everybody follows them on social media. And, and if you got young kickers, you know, we need as many young kickers as we can to be developed for the game, right? So appreciate Absolutely. you guys. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.